Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today, our Democrat colleagues brought us here. We heard this morning before we, we had to um, break a lot of grandstanding about abortion rights, and they, we came here so they could criticize a state law. Rather than hold a hearing on several important legislative items that have long been awaiting a hearing in this committee on this very topic of abortion, we have a number of bills we would love to have heard. My questions are for Ms. Moyetti, uh, who boasted on her Twitter feed on October 26th, complete with a dancing Egyptian princess meme, the following. Here it is. She said, some days I leave clinic and think, damn, I really was put on this earth to be the best damn abortion provider this side of the Mississippi. Not a humble brag, that's a full-on brag brag. I'm that good, three hearts. Well, with those credentials, ma'am, I'm, I'm really glad you're here, at least on video, and I really wish I had a full day to ask you some questions. But let's start with the written testimony you submitted for this hearing. I've highlighted some of the truly incredible statements you made there. The stunning irony of the opening of your fourth paragraph really struck me. You, you wrote, I want this committee to spend a few moments thinking about what it's like to be a person needing abortion care in this country. So just so I have this straight, you want us to, quote, think about what it's like to be a person. Really? What about those thousands of innocent preborn children that you've been involved in the abortion of? What about them? As the National Right to Life Committee summarizes so well, when a woman is pregnant, science tells us that the new life she carries is a completely separate and fully new human being from the moment of fertilization. By the time most abortions can be performed, the baby already has a beating heart and identifiable brain waves. The baby living in her mother is as distinct and unique a separate person, human being, as I am from you. This human being, like all of us, has the inalienable right to life and deserves the full protection under the law. The baby that every mother carries as she faces life and death decisions has a beating heart at 22 days after fertilization, brain waves as early as six weeks after fertilization. Most abortions are not performed until at least after, uh, on or after nine weeks of the pregnancy. This is a model of a, of a 10 week old preborn child. It obviously is a child. If you look at it at this stage, he or she has fingers and toes. Uh, they, they begin to practice breathing and facial expressions, even smiling. That's a very tiny person, ma'am. Um, that's what we're talking about. So yeah, let's consider what it means to be a person. Your written testimony goes on to describe the Texas heartbeat law as, quote, incredibly wrong, hateful and cruel, and dehumanizing to the clients you serve. And again, I just ask myself, really, really? What about the brutal violence and the murder that is committed upon the preborn child? That is the ultimate violation of human rights, the ultimate hateful and cruel act, the ultimate dehumanizing act. It's as if the world is upside down. I was particularly stunned to read the conclusion of your written testimony, ma'am, where you quoted, you said, quote, abortion is love, abortion is a blessing. What a twisted thing it is to suggest that the murder of 62 million innocent preborn children in this country is a blessing. Whether you or your friends acknowledge it or not, abortion is the horrible violation of the most essential truths and commands of our creator. Scripture clearly teaches and our Declaration of Independence plainly affirms a self-evident truth, not an opinion, but a self-evident truth that we're all created by God and given by him the same inalienable rights, beginning with the right to life. Congress has a duty to protect these fundamental rights and the lives of the preborn because they are unable to protect themselves. To put it bluntly, our duty is to protect these innocent children <coughs> from the unimaginable callousness, <coughs> barbaric violence that is done at the hands of the industry you represent. All life is precious because we're all made in God's image. Every single one of us has inestimable dignity and value, and our value is not related in any way to the color of our skin, the zip code we live in, how good looking we are, where we went to school. Our value is inherent because it's given to us by God. It's a biological reality that a preborn child is a member of the human family, and more and more the American people understand that. On, your, on October 9th, uh, Ms. Moya Yeti, you, you tweeted, it's okay and healthy to have sex for pleasure. Birth is punishment for pleasure. I want to make sure everybody knows the credentials of our witnesses here. Here's another one. October 13th, somebody, uh, somebody tweeted, was your abor abortion experience funny? If so, direct mail or email me at their email address. You, you, you shared that tweet and you said, I can't wait to read this piece with three hearts. Look, I think that says enough about the credentials and about the arguments that are being made here. I think the American people make the judgment for themselves. Abortion is not funny. It's an unspeakable tragedy. I think this hearing is a mockery of it. I think the challenge to the Texas state law is wrong. 
and I'm out of time. I yield back.